playoffs are here and there's a million dollars up for grabs. Here's everything you need to know for Saturday's games in terms of DFS and betting. It starts with Travis Etienne. He's taking on the Chargers this week. And last week, we saw him play just 55% of the snaps. Now, this is concerning. It was actually Jermichael Hasty, the backup, who played 49% of the snaps because they were trailing. He was used as the pass catching running back, which is bad news because if Etienne's not out there on passing downs, his role is less secure. But this week, he faces a really bad Chargers run defense. He's just a slight underdog in the Chargers run defense, 30th overall. It makes him still in play a little bit safer, but not as safe as some of these guys who have pass catching roles. So Etienne becomes a maybe this week. And if we go over to the tight end position, there's one tight end standing out above the rest. It's George Kittle, $1,700 more than any other tight end at $5,900. And if we look at Kittle's role lately, he's running a lot more routes, 44 routes, 26, 22, 31. He's used to running like 20 flat each week. That's a big reason why he has seven touchdowns in his last four games. But, 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 and this is a big old booty. He's now a 10 point favorite. Debo's going to be more involved as he gets healthy. So there's probably not as many routes needed or targets for Kittle. Now on a slate where there's not a ton of great tight ends and he's still relatively cheap. Yeah, he's strongly in play, but maybe you go double tight end instead because those double tight end lineups will allow you to afford his teammate, Christian McCaffrey, who yes, Christian McCaffrey this week is a standout, a screaming yes, because even last week when the dude plays just 49% of the snaps and then gets pulled, he still scores 17 fantasy points and only playing half the game. Now it is worth mentioning Elijah Mitchell did return last week and Mitchell before his injury, he was playing, you know, 24%, 23% of the snaps. His snaps went up in week 10, 36% of the snaps because of a late game blowout. So Mitchell should probably play around 20% of the snaps, which means McCaffrey is going to continue to see his elite role of 75 to 80%. And that elite role over the last four to five weeks has led to him averaging 26 fantasy points per game. So he's a screaming yes, but to afford him, we need some value. And let's look at $4,300 A. Jones, who's been under five points in three straight games. He's crashed back down to earth, but he's still playing the elite snaps and running the routes. And last time we saw him against the Chargers in week three, it was kind of his coming out party, at least with the Jaguars. 11 targets, he goes for 24 and a half fantasy points. And now he's just $4,300. Expect him to be a popular value this week, but he's still somebody that I'm going to enjoy, especially as we go through the slate. And you see, there's not a ton of value really anywhere. For the most part, everybody's relatively cheap, but there's no standout really cheap guys. And we can kind of prove that point by talking about his teammate, $3,400 Marvin Jones. Yes, extremely cheap, but his snaps have been reducing. He's not playing in two wide receiver sets anymore, so he's playing around 50, 55% of the snaps. You could probably get four targets here, but the dude is not efficient. He's struggling to get open. He's getting no yards after the catch. Not a lot of upside, even at the price tag. So it makes Marvin Jones a maybe at best if you even need to go down here. I'd prefer Zay Jones. Now, another wide receiver that is not really, really cheap, but somehow this cheap $5,700 Debo Samuel, expect him to be extremely highly owned. He returned last week. He saw three targets. He played 68% of the snaps. He looked healthy, and you could probably expect him to play 80 plus percent in a game that now matters. And some people might be worried about Christian McCaffrey, but in four completed healthy games with Christian McCaffrey, Debo is averaging 14.7 points on 7.8 targets. I mean, that's still borderline line top 10 wide receiver usage even with McCaffrey there so yes I am a fan of Debo this week beware of the ownership early on in the DFS blueprint he's coming in highly owned the guy who's going to struggle from this though is Brandon Ayuk who's more expensive than Debo and now might be the fourth option in the passing attack you see Ayuk in week 17 the last completed game that this 49ers team actually cared about and played their starters the whole time he went off 12 targets, nearly 30 DraftKings points, but Debo did not play in this game. And with Debo healthy, McCaffrey out there, Kittle's role emerging, it's difficult to see Ayuk having a clear role. I mean, the last two games that he had Debo healthy, he had four and three targets. So that's a lot of talk about these wide receivers. Why not talk about the quarterback in Brock Purdy, who's $5,500. He has the highest team total on the slate at 26 and a half, but... He is a 10-point favorite. Historically, quarterbacks who are 10-point favorites, especially in run-first offenses, top 10 in rushing efficiency when it's a neutral game script, you don't have to pass, you're leading. They don't score that many fantasy points. And now Purdy has been really efficient. He had 16 points last time against Seattle, but he's been even better since then. But I don't think they're going to be trying to throw for 300 yards. I'm expecting around 25 pass attempts. I'm just not that interested. Which leads me to my first prop and maybe my favorite prop, at least from this game, the under 220 passing yards for Brock Purdy. I have him in the 170s in this game. I'm not shocked if he throws the ball 18 times take the under there's a link in the description below and you'll get a free bet up to 100 bucks that is on prizepicks.com just check out that link you put in 20 you get 20 right back you put in 100 you get 100 dollars right back you might as well take the free bet that countless others are using now. All right, so back to running back we go. Obviously, McCaffrey's expensive. Then there's this man, you know, Austin Eckler, the number one overall running back in fantasy, fell 10 catches short of setting a new running back record. Well, the last couple of weeks, Austin Eckler's snaps have been reducing under 60%, 45% in week 18, a game that actually, you know, somewhat mattered. They play their starters for the first half. He only plays 40% of the snaps. But this was expected and something that Austin Eckler actually vocalized himself on his own stream saying, yeah, he's going to pipe it down a little bit until the playoffs. Expect 
like 70% or so of the snaps now moving forward. So the question becomes McCaffrey or Eckler? And the simple answer is, I mean, both of these dudes, they're averaging 26 fantasy points per game over the last eight games or so. There's a massive drop off. They're both going to be popular in lineups. They're easy to afford because there's no super expensive guy when it comes to quarterback, even tight end to an extent and wide receiver. Now, the way to be able to afford these guys and where the value lies and or getting unique is by going double tight ends. And one way to do that is Evan Ingram, who's only 4,200. Now, he only has six total targets over the last two games after he popped off for about a month or a month and a half straight. But Ingram is still seeing an elite role, playing 90% of the snaps, running out there for 80 plus percent of the plays in an offense that are slight underdogs this week with a nice team total. Usually a positive thing for the passing game. Expect, expect Evan Ingram to be a popular play, but not when he's paired up with another tight end. And that other tight end, no, it's not Gerald Everett. Uh, is it Noah Font? No, it's not Noah Font. It is $2,500 Colby Parkinson, who I'm not dying to play, but I do think he's a nice punt if you're trying to play both of these running backs. Because he's been the Seahawks' number one tight end since Will Disley got hurt a couple weeks ago. 81% and 79% of the snaps. By far more, almost double than what Noah Font is getting. And in these two games, he's seen some decent volume. He's seen 10 total targets. That's not bad. You're getting five targets or so from a $2,500 tight end with red zone upside. I'll take it. And now because of that, I'm not all that interested in Noah Font. Again, who I believe right now is basically the 1B here out of this tight end room, but he's more expensive and people probably don't know that's happening. You might as well take advantage of it with a really low owned Colby Parkinson. He's not an elite play Colby Parkinson, but he allows you to play McCaffrey and Eckler while he's out there running some routes. Now, the only other tight end that I think is in play is going to be Gerald Everett, but I'm not getting there as much. I'm not going to completely rule him out. He saw five targets last week, but his snaps have now decreased in five straight games because Trey McKitty, the rookie, and Donald Parham the former XFL player, they're just simply seeing more usage and they're using three tight ends. So instead of playing 70% of the snaps, he was playing in the 40% last week. Now, in terms of his teammates, we got to talk about these receivers, starting with Keenan Allen at $7,000. He's actually the most expensive receiver, which is still cheap. And he had, in his last full game, five catches, 60 yards, not bad, but he ended up going out there and seeing a season high 95% of the routes run. This guy's not leaving the field. And now this will be his best matchup since the Tennessee game in week 15 when he caught eight balls. This team in Jacksonville gives up the seven most yards to slot receivers, play Keenan Allen. And that brings us to his quarterback, Justin Herbert, who look, he has a nice team total, 24 and a half points. He's the most expensive, but I think it's worthy of being so because he just throws a ton. He's thrown over 41 times per game. This team throws 70% of the time in neutral situations, one score games or when they're leading or when they're tied basically by one score around there and now he faces a bottom 10 borderline bottom five secondary in jacksonville justin herbert is a top two quarterback play on the slate he's going to be the highest projected guy in the dfs blueprint link down below on patreon so herbert's a yes we're probably going to stack keenan allen and one tip for you on these two and three game slates triple stack to get different instead of stacking a guy with one or two guys from his team go with three guys from the same team to get there and another option for you is going to be mike williams who also ended his season strong in his last full games 10 targets seven catches 94 yards and even though he's missed a lot of time this year in the games he's been playing in per game he's top 10 in your cheat code targets deep targets and red zone targets that leads to upside he is a must even more so because of his ceiling over keenan allen i'd rather have mike williams if you're choosing one but the answer is simply if you're playing justin herbert is both if you're playing trevor lawrence i still want mike williams as a run back so williams is a yes and the wide receiver one on the opposite side of this game is also dirt cheap he's 5900 christian kirk who in the biggest game last week earned eight targets and now he's up to eight targets per game on the season when you factor in last week's he's ranked fourth in red zone targets this year so a lot of upside and here's what that leads to it leads to getting volume those targets getting efficiency his yards per route run his yards after the catch and then getting red zone upside i mean that is a complete wide receiver massive upside last time out there against this chargers secondary he put up nearly 20 fantasy points and that is part of the reason why and everything we've talked about here that i like is over 57 and a half receiving yards on prize picks again link down below take advantage of that free bet link in the description go get it and now we can talk about his quarterback i'm not really interested in geno smith at the price tag 5600 16 and a half point team total because you get trevor lawrence at just 5700 and trevor lawrence right now is just a one point underdog with a nice team total of 23 and a half historically this leads to nice outcomes for quarterbacks and in similar situations this year with a nice team total and just being a slight underdog he's averaging 23.7 fantasy points that would be absolutely fantastic for this price tag and for what it's worth he did put up arguably one of his best games on the entire year earlier this year against the chargers in terms of efficiency put up 25 fantasy points three touchdowns in this game he is indeed a great play reminder if you're playing him i prefer triple stacking him we're talking evan ingram maybe his running back christian kirk zay jones these guys all right now we must talk about some of these other wide receivers who are up here dk metcalf look he's been quiet lately and san francisco has held him down he's put up just 35 yards and 55 yards in two games against him but at least in these situations where he's a big underdog this year he's come through because his team is likely to throw more and in those games this year when he's a big underdog he's averaging 15.8 fantasy points on eight targets so expect 
expect some more volume, but it is a concern that they've shut him down. I'm personally more interested in Tyler Lockett at six thousand dollars flat. The flat price principle means people are probably going down to Debo and Christian Kirk thinking they're getting a discount, or go up to a Mike Williams, a Keenan Allen, a DK Metcalf thinking they're getting a better player. When the truth is, Tyler Lockett might be the best player of them all in terms of DFS at low ownership. Earlier this year against San Francisco, twenty-two points, he goes over hundred yards, and then later in the season, he has nine targets, seven catches, sixty-eight yards. He is performing out of the slot. I think he is a great play, and I think his over sixty-five and a half receiving yards is a nice option. This would be my third favorite out of the ones we've talked about. They've kind of been in order so far, but I still like it. I have him projected in the 70s for yardage right now in the player props tool. And you can get this with a free bet up to $100. Use that link in the description below with the countless others on prizepicks.com. All right, so we took a little bit of a break from running back. Let's go back there and close up shop. And we can close it up with basically saying, look, none of these backups are in play. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell will probably see like six, seven touches. I'd rather just go to the cheaper tight ends and wide receivers. But Kenneth Walker, Kenneth Walker is indeed in play. If you are somebody looking for a three running back build, I prefer Kenneth Walker to Travis Etienne. Or if you're just trying to not play both Eckler and McCaffrey, I would go to Kenneth Walker. Now, last time out against San Francisco, a top five run defense where he's a 10 point underdog this week. Not great. He at least put up 12 points, but I'm more focused on this. He had four catches on five targets. It was the first time in a while they got down by a lot and they had to actually play from behind. And we saw him running more routes, seeing more targets. And this was even with some other guys in the backfield back. And now Travis Homer, he's on IR. So I think it makes Kenneth Walker appealing for what it's worth as a big underdog this year. It's a limited sample, of course, but he is averaging 13.7 points. Now to afford all these guys, let's talk about some more of the values down here. You have guys like DeAndre Carter. You know, I'm expecting one or two catches, nothing crazy there. You have Juwan Jennings, the wide receiver three for San Fran, but in a run first offense for a game script that says run first, he's the fourth passing option for Brock Purdy. Yeah, I'm not really there. 20 routes or so if you're trying to punt it. I prefer Marvin Jones. And then these other guys, not so appealing. Ray Ray McLeod probably will run 10 routes or so, maybe see a designed run. Laquan Treadwell, the wide receiver three for Seattle. I'm not going to say he's completely out of play. He's been running like, you know, 15 routes or so, but with Tyler Lockett back and healthy, probably only runs 10 routes. You're hoping for a deep bomb miracle here. The only other guy to mention is Josh Palmer. His role has significantly decreased with the wide receivers healthy out here. Probably runs 50% of the routes. Probably sees four targets. At this price tag, I'll only say he's in play because of low ownership, but all the guys around him, Zay Jones, Debo, even Brandon Ayuk are better options. So that is exactly what you need. Everything you need to know to take down this Saturday DFS slate and also in the betting market as well. But if you want the exact specifics on the lineups that are best here, the players that are best in terms of leverage, the lineup optimizer, the Discord access, and a whole lot more more we'll check out the dfs blueprint link down below on patreon in the description best of luck on this slate there'll also be a sunday video out later this week maybe by the time you're watching this for that three game slate enjoy the playoff games win some money